Welcome to the Insurance Producers Podcast, where we bring you the top personalized producers, insurance agents, and industry partners, giving you at least three takeaways to 10x your production and build your multi-million dollar revenue books. So sit back, relax, and become inspired by the success stories and strategies of the world's top insurance minds. Let's roll. Welcome, everyone, to the Insurance Producers Podcast. I'm your host, Cyrus Jaffrey. It is a pleasure today to introduce Lorena from Mom Insurance, just like Calm Mom from, from Florida. Lorena, welcome. How are you? Hi, Jack, uh, Cyrus. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm doing good, and you? I am doing great. I'm doing great. Um, it is hot. Like we said, we talked about this a little bit in, uh, in Nebraska, but it gets super cold here as well. You don't deal, have, you don't have to deal with the, with the cold. You always have to deal with the hot. So I'm very jealous, Lorena. But with that being said, Hey, everybody's looking forward to talking, to talking a little bit about the ACH plans, life insurance, health insurance, stuff like that. So, um, if you want to go back maybe and tell us just a little bit about how you got into the industry, uh, how does the agency structure look like and what you're doing right now? Sure. So I uh, studied actually finance in, in college. That was my major. And my mom had been in the industry a lot longer since before I was even born. And, you know, one summer she needed an appointment setter. And I said, sure, I can set up appointments for you. I've done things over the phone before. And nothing one day I went with her on one of these appointments I had made. I wanted to see you know, who these people were. And I thought, you know, this is something I could do myself easily. It fits into what I'm studying of finance. Um, at the time, we were doing a lot uh, of life insurance for like uh, a lot of people at that time in 2000, 2006. Uh, we're buying mortgages, right? A refinancing. So mm -hmm. we got more into that mortgage protection niche. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we've been doing it. I've been doing it ever since 18 years now. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's awesome. Um, Rena, what's the, um, what's the agency structure look like? Because you don't do any property casualty. You're strictly on the life insurance side, health insurance side, and some Medicare stuff. But what's the agency structure look like to today? Because I know there's not a ton of service like it is on the auto and home side of things. But you guys have any other people or is it just you and mom? Well, yeah, it's just, it's just mom and I. We have some virtual assistants to help out with like social media stuff. But we're really the ones, you know, the face of the business. And we, there is, you know, a misconception that if you sell life and health, you know, you never pick up the phone afterwards. Mm -hmm. But I think that depends on the agent. And I think customer service is super important. Um, so, yeah, we definitely are very heavy on customer service as that's what leads to repeat business and referrals down the line. Uh, no. yeah. And, yeah. and our main focus is... Um, ACA for health insurance and then life insurance. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I was with a friend of mine who does some life insurance and he said, Hey, I love calling on my existing clients just to say, Hey, I just want to confirm your beneficiaries, you know? And then when you're confirming those beneficiaries, they're like, Hey, like, do you, do you mind if I call the beneficiaries, let them know their beneficiaries? And then that's a lead. Cause like you're talking to them, they're on a life insurance policy. They're curious. And I'm sure those would be some things on the mortgage protection side. So, um, Renner, so in the industry for obviously 18 years, Florida market is crazy on the auto and home side, but not, not on obviously the life insurance side. But my first question to you, we'll go to all that, but how is it working with your mom? <laughs> that That's a question I get asked often <laughs> in podcasts. You know, people are like, oh man, you work with your mom. Yeah. How's that? You know, we, we get along good as mother and daughter. And then that also helps translate into business. Um, so... I think the important thing is setting boundaries of like, okay, after this time, we don't really talk about work anymore. Um, and she really has her clients. I have mine. Obviously, you know, if one of our clients need, need something and maybe one of us aren't available, the other one will, will pick up and, and reach out. Um, but so far it's, it's been great working together with her. I think it's been a blessing because I've been able to have good guidance as to, What's the proper way of doing things, how to handle certain situations, maybe objections, right? Um, that you don't really get a lot of that sales training um, when you get your license a lot of times. Yeah, that's awesome. So 
Mm-hmm. Did you, are you guys uh, partners now or you get your own, or is that a different, different setup you guys have? Yeah. The, the agency is, is ours. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I work with uh, two of my brothers and my sister. Yep. So it's a four okay. of us, four of us in the agency. So I could relate a little bit about, um, about what you're dealing with on a daily basis. And I don't work with my mom, obviously, but I've got, I've got my younger brother, but all young, sim, younger siblings. Um, and there are times where people have asked me, you know, what's the dynamic look like working with, with your, with your siblings? Because at the end of the day, I think it's, it gets pretty complicated when there is too many people making decisions, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. Um, so knowing that like, okay, people can make decisions, but at the end of the day, there's one person at the end that will make like the final decision if need to be right. If they need to correct exactly. something and things like that. So I'm sure you guys have, you guys have figured, figured that piece of it out because in our agency, like I'm the agency founder, my brother is mm-hmm. my co-founder, but at the end of the day, when like a decision needs to be made and nobody can make decisions, my decision usually is the final, but I try to empower them to make right. as many decisions right. as possible. No, it's, so- it's important that just because it's a family business to treat it as a regular business, right? You have the CEO, yeah. the CMO, all these other people. Um, and I think it's important to handle it the same way. And yeah. obviously respect each other because what well, you would tell your brother, you wouldn't tell an employee, right? So, mm-hmm. so keeping that um, yeah. balance is really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I would say holidays. Holidays are a lot of fun because we always have something to talk about, at least. So, right. <laughs> um, so, so okay. So let's go into the. I'm really curious. There's a so this this podcast is primarily a lot of property casualty. So I think you're going to bring a lot of value to them. So talk to me a little bit about the mortgage protection piece that I'm very interested in learning from you because. We do 95% of our business comes from a mortgage lender or a real estate agent. I believe, I don't know, between 100 to 150 new clients we bring on board at our agency every month. Uh, 95% of those are, are from a lender or a real estate agent that gets referred to us, first time home buyers, second time home buyers, blah, blah, blah. And we've always tried to figure out the mortgage protection piece because it's so easy. They get a bunch of letters yeah. right after, right, to do it. So when you were doing it, Lorena, what where did you have some success with that? Well, I partnered with other property and casualty agents who were maybe licensed in life, but they just don't have the time. They don't have, you know, the training of the products themselves, but they have all these people that need our help. And instead of getting, filling out one of those letters and now that being sold to 20, 30 agents mm-hmm. and being bombarded with phone calls, um, it would be a lot easier to just partner with somebody that specializes in life and maybe work out whatever the commission split is Mm -hmm. because for life insurance, that's fairly easy Mm -hmm. to do. Right. Um, And that's how, that's how I was able to help a lot of people with the mortgage protection. Of course, also the, um, the lenders themselves, right. That might be a little bit more tricky, but certainly the property and casualty, because you're writing the policy for the homeowner's insurance, right? So, hey, have you guys thought about mortgage protection, which is really the consumer protecting themselves and their family if something were to happen to them for the mortgage that they worked so hard to get uh, to be paid off? Or now there's also with like living benefits that like if there's a critical illness, Mm. you can use part of that death benefit to help pay for the mortgage, right? So I think it's key. I don't think it's necessarily that the person that writes the homeowners needs to be the one that writes the life insurance itself. Again, Mm -hmm. it might be better to just partner with a life insurance broker. And I say broker because it's somebody that represents multiple insurance companies, right? Because health might be an issue. It's not just finances. Um, So yeah, to just partner with somebody, if if you don't want to handle all that work yourself, and then you get something from it. And I think consumers appreciate that because they see the property and casualty agent as somebody that can connect them with other professionals to help them solve issues that they have. Yeah, that's awesome. So 
that's probably what you would recommend to insurance agents that are on the property casualty side for sure. Say, hey, listen, like, because I would 100% agree with you because, you know, we've got 13, 14 different insurance agents, sales side that write property casualty for us. And they're not very good at life insurance. Now, I come from a State Farm background. I used to be an agent for State Farm. We had to do it all because we were compensated because we had to do life insurance and health insurance and investments because otherwise we wouldn't get paid really, really right. low on the property casualty side. So we had to write life insurance, if that makes sense. But we have not figured it out. It's been five years since I've been gone and we have yeah. met, we, we couldn't, our guys just won't do it. To, to me, I think it just makes sense because people think life insurance is just, oh, fill out an application and mm. that's it. There's a lot that goes into that. Not just properly knowing how to fill out the application, but also the underwriting process. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's taking longer sometimes in some cases than before to get approved. So you have to do a lot of follow up with mm -hmm. that customer. Maybe, maybe they need to go get medical records or you need to schedule a medical mm -hmm. exam. There's also delivering the policy. There's also following up on the policy, like who your beneficiary areas are. Maybe you need to change them down mm -hmm. the line. So it's not just selling a policy. You also need to review that policy. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think it's important to have that other agent, the life insurance agent, be the real servicing agent and be the one that helps you generate more revenue into your property and casualty business that you wouldn't have otherwise, right? Um, but then have them be the one doing all the heavy lifting, right, that comes mm -hmm. along with that. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I would certainly, mm -hmm. certainly agree with that. So to do it the right way, you definitely want to partner with somebody that does this for a living on a daily basis versus doing it 10% of the time because they just won't do it. I believe in, yeah. I, I remember reading the book, The One Thing by Gary Keller from, from mm -hmm. Keller Williams. He talks about the one thing, like, hey, you're going to be really, really good at one thing. It's going to be really difficult to be really, really good at three things. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. How, so what are you, so are you still writing some life insurance as a mortgage protection or are you have gone into some more things that you're focusing on now? I think mortgage protection is really the basis of anything because a lot of people have mortgages. Yes. And so it's just an easy way to get an amount of death benefit, right? But there's other things to look at when we look at life insurance, right? There's also covering income, for example, like a multiple of income. Um, and then something that I think a lot of people are interested, especially with so much volatility in the market, is being able to create almost like um, to supplement whatever you're doing for retirement using life insurance, right? Um, but that's more of a permanent type of plan and it has to be properly structured. Um, so I see that a lot with like self-employed people that maybe don't have a 401k or, you know, employee benefits and things like that. And then we've gotten also doing a lot of the, for businesses, like protecting partnerships. If one mm. of them passes away to have, you know, enough money to buy out the partner that passed. Is that by sell agreements or? Yeah. Yeah. Like okay. buy sell agreements. Okay. Instead of having, you know, the spouse come in who probably knows nothing about the business mm -hmm. and has no interest in leaving their job or whatever the case might be right um so yeah i think it's just it's all life insurance just different um ways different things it's solving mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah. so i know you are doing some acas as well right yeah so i actually started aca the first year it came out in 2013 hmm. for 2014 um so back then, that must have been around June 2013, we were doing events, educational events about what this law, the, afford the Patient Protection and Affordable mm -hmm. Care Act, what it really meant for consumers, because people were just hearing these things, but they had no idea about what it really covered and what it meant. And so we were just giving educational seminars at churches, at businesses, about what the changes were to come. We had no idea what insurance companies would be mm. or how, you know, they would pay or anything like that. But we saw a great opportunity for consumers to have quality health insurance, no matter what pre-existing condition they might have. And then, you know, the other part of it is that based on income and family size, the IRS would help people with a tax credit pay for their health insurance. So it was really taking into account the two reasons why people before 
were not able to have health insurance, right? Either they mm-hmm. had a pre-existing condition, they were overweight, they had diabetes, right? Whatever the issue might be, yeah. or it just cost too much, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so I've been doing that now 10 years, and I think it's a great way to help a lot of consumers if you do it properly, like everything. Um, and it's it's not a complicated sale. It's fairly easy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does, you know, like everything, it does have some needs analysis. Who are their doctors if they take medications, mm-hmm. right? To make sure you're putting them in the right plan. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So, so Lerna, how do you, um, how do you find your leads? Like, what would be your two or three main source of leads? Do you have a process for that on a daily basis that you have to follow to be able to consistently, or do you work on referrals only? How does that look like? Yeah, we work on on referrals only from our own client base. They're constantly sending me. I speak Spanish too, so that helps. Yep. Like you know, my my friends just got here from Cuba or wherever country they're coming from, and so referrals from my own clients. And then I I do get a lot of referrals from other professionals. Um, you know, property and casualty, maybe other insurance agents that are not licensed in my state. Or, you know, a lot of people are not even interested in doing mm. ACA. You know, they rather just focus on some other health product. Um, so, yeah, I would say other professionals. Um, I'm also in a networking group, um, BNI, I'm sure mm-hmm. you've heard of. Mm-hmm. It's pretty popular. And from there, I've been able to generate business as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. So, So 18 years in, 16 to 18 years in, what would be if somebody wants to get into the life insurance game? Now, obviously, you're advanced. Um, what would be one or two things that you would recommend they should do at the beginning to pick up some steam and to get excited? Because I feel like our industry is one of those things where sometimes it takes life insurance specifically a month or two for you to get paid. So it's really like hard right. to wait sometimes. Like, and I'm sure that was tough for you, but having your mom to kind of show you like, hey, listen, if you're in this long term, look, this is going to pay off, right? Like, right, And a lot right. of people I feel like leave in the first six months or whatever because they just don't see the fruit come in as fast as they wanted it to. Mm-hmm. What would be your recommendation to them or what would be one or two things that they should be doing so they can have a long term uh, career in the life insurance space? I think with life insurance, what's really important is to have a why. Like, why are you, are you doing this? Obviously, we all need to pay bills, but mm-hmm. something bigger than that, like maybe the people that you're helping, because you never know, like, how you selling a life insurance policy can financially impact mm. that family until maybe you've had to pay um, a death benefit claim. So, like, I, I've had to do that. And it was a lady that bought a, she had just retired and she bought a life insurance policy and she passed away two months after buying the policy from me. So, and that had been a referral from a property and casualty agent, Mm. uh, coincidentally. But so like, really like, who is it that I'm impacting? And then I would say, you know, that when you start in insurance, they usually tell you, make a list of a hundred people. But like if you're new or you just graduated college or, you know, you're coming from another industry that might be kind of tough. And you also, on in in insurance, you know, there's a lot of perception that we're just here yeah. trying to sell something. Yeah. Um, but you have especially to get it life. in your head, especially life, right? You really have to get it in your head that you might be the only person that ever talks to this person mm-hmm. about life insurance. And so, having that in mind, having that mentality is important. But also, you need to be out there, putting yourself out there, talking to other professionals that can refer you business. Um, try to see like who, who you work with well, right? Maybe it's not the first person you meet. Maybe you need to meet, you know, 10 people that do property and casualty. Let's say that that's who you want to partner with, right? Because a lot of times like PNC agents are busy. They forget about you, right? Mm-hmm. So, so it's important to, to have that follow up is really important and just setting goals like, weekly goals and daily goals of like how many people do I need to talk to before I get a sale Mm -hmm. and then just working on on those numbers and being able to get better at closing so you don't have to talk to as many people as the time passes on right yeah 
Do you do you keep track of your numbers? Not really, because at this point, since I work mainly referrals, it's very hard for me to get a no, unless it's like you know, financially they can afford it or whatever the case might be, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. So, what's your day to day look like as a life insurance agent? Are you just like a nine to five property casualty? I understand it's a little bit different because you get a lot of calls and they need you, obviously, for making a payment right. or adding a car, or changing a car. Life insurance is a little bit different, so you can make your schedule even a lot more flexible than a property casualty agent. What does that look like for you? So I have calendar links that I send to my clients so they can make appointments, right? And then I do block out times for quoting because that does take a lot of time, Mm -hmm. especially in life insurance, Um, different scenarios that we might want to look at. So I definitely block time for the quotes. And then, you know, I block times for a clients that can make appointments with me. Um, the other side of it, too, is, you know, you got to set, set time aside for maybe continuing education, attending a webinar or a podcast or, you know, something that will help you throughout the week. Um, but I think it's important to not think, oh, I went to five webinars this week, so like, I, that's not working. Okay. So, so it's really differentiating, like what's going to get you to the next Mm -hmm. level of what you're looking to do. Um, and, and now I, most, um, all my appointments are over the phone. I don't really do zoom appointments. I find zoom and video conferencing like live to be, um, like very demanding on the consumer. Because I have to be like really paying attention. And so I find the phone less distracting for them. Um, I used to work in person. So I used to do everything mm-hmm. in person. And we had an office for about two years. So in 2016, I decided to do everything virtually. So I, I joke now that I was ready for the pandemic because yeah. <laughs> we already had, we already knew what we were doing to work virtually, right? When yeah. now people were like, oh man, how do I do this? So I think that's helped a lot in not wasting time in traffic or waiting for somebody to come to the office, right? With, with e-signatures, it's a lot easier to, yeah. to handle these things. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Would it be easier? And, and I, I'm sorry. I would also say, yeah. um, especially if you're new, set time aside for prospecting. Like yeah. That needs to be an activity that you do maybe one or two hours every day. Mm-hmm. Yep. And what would that look like? You think, where would they call? What are you, if they're just like, yeah, like, like, like if you want to partner with other property and casualty yep. agents, okay. as an example, make, get a list and start calling them, sending yep. them things on LinkedIn, right? Maybe social media posts that you want to write yep. um, to target them. And then prospecting could also mean referrals that you've been given, actually calling the referrals and setting up appointments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we read one book as a team, Lorena, and right now we're le- we're reading a hundred million leads by Alex Hermosi. And okay. that, that, that's a really, really, really good book about prospecting specifically goes a lot into cold calling, how mm-hmm. cold, how cold calling is how he built his business through gyms and stuff like that. And I think for life insurance, cold calling would be pretty tough. I would assume just because life insurance is not an easier product, like a property casualty to sell for just price, if that makes sense. Right, right. But it it depends who you're calling on, right? Like if you're calling a business, you're going to talk about business continuation if something mm-hmm. happens to one of the partners, yeah. right? But, th- but then you might want to talk to professionals that work with those business owners mm-hmm. so they can give you referrals instead of you cold calling these people right yeah. to have an easier in than just cold calling but i think everything works if you work it long enough right like everything yeah you just gotta give it you know i think the book talked mm-hmm. about how you gotta do a hundred days a hundred days of making a hundred cold calls a day like you just gotta do it you just gotta commit to it do it for a hundred days that gives you about a hundred yeah that gives you about three and a half months of cold calling every day, a hundred, and then it's going to trickle down to where all those leads are going to potentially turn into clients um, after, after you convert them. So that's kind of what it was, which was, which was kind of cool. Cause I was driving today and, and I was listening to that phone. So as you're talking, I'm, I'm kind of putting the two together. So 
Mm-hmm. Um, for some agents that are like, you know what, like I, I do a lot of property casualty. I really want to dabble a little bit into the life insurance space. For agents like me who are like, nah, like well, I believe in one thing that's completely like that. We hired a life insurance person, like you said, that we brought on ten years in the business. That's all they do is life insurance. We said, hey, listen, we're gonna con- we're gonna send you all of our home and auto leads or whatever. You're gonna convert those into property ca- or into life insurance because we don't want to we don't want to yeah. do it. My question, my question to you is for a lot for some of those agents that are like, you know what, I'm gonna do it because we only have two to three clients a week, and I think I can handle it myself. It, do you have obviously your biggest recommendation is hey listen like give it to somebody that does take a half a split with the conversion their conversion rate is going to be so much higher because this is what they do all day you're going to probably make more money doing it that way versus doing it yourself like I understand right. that part of it but if somebody's like no I really want to do it do you have any recommendations for those property casualty agents who are like nope I'm going to do it myself uh, anything that you can give them you know it's it's like anything else figure out which insurance companies you want to represent and why mm-hmm. some might be a good niche for certain health concerns yep. some might be for something else right you you don't need a lot of insurance companies maybe like 3 or 4 is good enough um and maybe if you're starting out definitely work with um like an agent like a FMO yep who can give you those contracts, but that also provides training because just because you're a property and casualty agent does not mean that you know how to sell life insurance or how to bring it up. Right. Mm-hmm. So definitely that training is important to have and yeah, uh, just being consistent and it, it shouldn't be a hard sale for them either way. Right. Yeah. No, yeah, cause you already have all the financial information, you know, you can just say, "Hey, I have a quote ready for you. I wanted to talk to you about something." Yeah, you know? it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt. I mean, it couldn't hurt. Um, yeah, law of large numbers. Yeah, even, even, large. even if you only get what like four sales a month, one one a week. Right. That's you know that's not bad. Better than to start. Better than nothing. Be- better than zero. Better than zero. Yeah, and mm-hmm. there's some good revenue on the life insurance side up front, right? Which kind of could yeah. help. A lot of younger agents, I encourage a lot of younger agents, that first year, we give a lot of all, I come from State Farm, so a lot of State Farm, American Family, Farmers, Farm Bureau agents that have left Captive Channel or come into the Independent Channel, and I talk to them on a daily, and I recommend them. I say, listen, like that first year, life, property casualty is going to be pretty tough, but you come from writing a lot of life insurance, so I think that first year, life insurance might be the way to get you through financially through the first year because property casualty, you're not going to make a ton of money on right away and you got to pay some of the bills. So life insurance might be a good way for you to come into this industry and make a right. lot of money right away because they pay up front so much more. So, so like life insurance is good for that, but there's also chargebacks 100%. that people have to be aware of. Yes. So you have to be writing good business. You can't yeah. just, you know, write whatever I know because I got advanced nine months, right? Yes. So you have to be aware of that. So you can either get paid advance, which means that that you get paid like nine months up front, mm-hmm. or you can get paid as earns, just like you do with I think property and casualty. Yep. Yep. Where you get paid month by month. So it just depends your risk tolerance and you know how you want to handle that. Now the other thing I will say is that a lot of agents say, Oh, I don't want to do ACA because it's complicated, it's whatever, there's a lot of um, agents out there doing things improperly, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and it's it's a bit of an issue, but that's neither here nor there. Mm-hmm. Um, but ACA is very easy to get sales, which can also lead to other sales, mm-hmm. right? Because they all need homeowners and car insurance and life insurance, right? So, you know, that's something else a, a property and casualty agent could do mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. if they're licensed for it, of yeah. course. Right now, I know we're almost we're almost out of time here. Do you have any other recommendations on the life insurance side, ACA side, health insurance side for some agents? No, I, I think like everything, just sticking with a goal, having a big why, and you know, just going for it because it's it's a great career to be in where you get to actually help people day in day out, and you know, if you do right by your client. In the long run, you, you'll get paid for it, right? Yeah. I always say on the property casualty side, depends on how big your agency is. Like three years is a good mark um, for smaller agencies, I feel like. Three years is a good mark to where 
you're kind of at a point to where you feel okay. Five years is where I truly believe that a lot of agents, if they can just stick to the insurance industry, doing the things that they're supposed to be doing on a daily basis, five years into it, you're going to, this, this industry, you're never, ever going to leave. It's going to be really difficult to leave unless you sell and do something else, especially on the independent channel side. That's on the property casualty side from what we have seen. Is there a mark on the life insurance side to where like, if you could just make it to this yeah, I think I think they say it's like seven years. Okay. If you can make it seven years, especially if you're just doing like mm-hmm. because once you pass that seven year mark, you should be okay. But really, I don't see a reason why you can't be successful from the first year. Mm-hmm. You know, you just have to set your goals and and do do activity that will generate mm-hmm. revenue every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I it's it's crazy because. A lot of people ask me all the time, like, hey, what do you what do you recommend I should do? Like, I know it's going to be tough for the first year or two. I'm like, yeah, it's going to be tough, 100%. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I know my numbers. So when we, bring in, when we bring on an agent, I said, listen, if you just make 25 calls a day, I can almost guarantee you, and you say the things that I'm telling you, I can almost guarantee you if you consistently do the activity that I'm telling you, you will not make less than this amount because it's just not possible. We've done the math on it. We have the last five years of data that we can prove to you that, hey, if you do certain activity on a daily, you are going to. The people that don't do those activity or do half of it or do a third of it are going to be the ones that are just going to get a third of that income and they're going to get discouraged and and all of that stuff. So yeah, 100%. Sure. Yeah, and life insurance is the same. I think it's like 20, 16, 4, okay. which means you need 20 appointments a week. Okay. Out of those 20, maybe you'll see 16. The other four will reschedule or whatever. And then out of those, maybe you'll sell four. Yeah. Right? It's just a, an industry statistic. But again, the more you do it, the the better your closing ratios will be. Um, and yeah, and just going back to like, why why are you doing this? Having a niche, I think also helps. Like if you speak a, some language, you can help those people. Or if you have a certain hobby that you enjoy doing, you know, you can, that's an easy way to connect with somebody. For sure, for sure. So we asked this question. This is the last question always. Um, what would, so... This podcast, Insurance Producers Podcast, one of the things we have in here is we want everybody to win the day. We're very big on win the day in our organization. You got to win the day. Don't forget about the week. Forget about the week, the month, the quarter, the year. It's today. Like if you just do today. So what would it take? What does it take for Lorena for the day to be considered one? When you put your head on the pillow, you're like, you know what? That was a that was a day. That was a good day. Like I won that day. Uh, what is one or two things that you must do? And for some people, it's just making the bed. For some people, it's working out. For some people, it's making the cold calls. Is there something that you have every day that you do that considers your day a win or a loss? Yeah, I mean, I think as long as I'm being active towards a certain goal, it doesn't matter if I, you know, I have 20 things on my to-do list. As long as I do one of them, don't have 20 things on your to-do list. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, just having that goal in mind and working towards it, whether it's just maybe having sent an email to somebody that could connect me with somebody, right? Um, And it's just doing, like you said, the activities every day that you know will will lead to progress. So, yeah, and just keeping track of that somehow is, is, I think, important. So that way, when you're like, oh, I haven't had a good week, you look at what you did every day. Well, you know, Tuesday I didn't send an email, for Mm -hmm. example. 100%. Right now, it's a pleasure having you on the podcast. Uh, we certainly appreciate the insight. If somebody wants to reach out to you for advice or questions or concerns, how can they get a hold of you? Sure. Um, I guess the best way would be my my email. Okay. Um, life at momins.com. That's M-A-O-M-I-N-S dot com. Perfect. Lorena, thank you so much for being on. We appreciate you. Um, enjoy the sunny Florida. Oh, it's raining today. Williams. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I got it better for once. Than, Nebraska yeah. got better better than Florida for once. So right. appreciate you there being you on. Go. Have a very nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.